My son did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. I carried out the policy of the United States government in rooting out corruption in, in Ukraine. Mueller had shown to a fairly well that this president had obstructed justice and done it repeatedly. And so at that moment, I called for opening an impeachment inquiry. Now, that didn't happen. And look what happened as a result. Donald Trump broke the law again in the summer, broke it again this fall. But he told us who he was. Maya Angelou told us years ago, listen to somebody when they tell you who they are the first time. During that election, Donald Trump told us he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. You are the lone billionaire on this stage. Oh. What's your plan for closing the income gap? Well, first of all, let me say this. Senator Sanders is right. There have been 40 years where corporations have bought this government, and those 40 years have meant a 40-year attack on the rights of working people and specifically on organized labor. My question is not why do Bernie and I support a wealth tax, it's why is it does everyone else on this stage think it is more important to protect billionaires than it is to invest in an entire generation of Americans? Thank you, Senator. But I want to give a reality check here to Elizabeth because no one on this stage wants to protect billionaires, not even the billionaire wants to protect billionaires. Uh, we just have different approaches. Your idea is not the only idea. Well, as somebody who wrote the damn bill, as I said, under the Medicare for all bill that I wrote, premiums are gone. Co-payments are gone. Deductibles are gone. All out-of-pocket expenses are gone. At the end of the day, the overwhelming majority of people will save money on their health care bills. But I do think it is appropriate to acknowledge that taxes will go up. They're going to go up significantly for the wealthy. I will not sign a bill into law that does not lower costs for middle class families. A yes or no question that didn't get a yes or no answer. Look, this is why people here in the Midwest are so frustrated with Washington in general and Capitol Hill in particular. Your signature, Senator, is to have a plan for everything except this. Senator Sanders, well, I want to start with you. I want well, to start. We're, we're moving on, Senator. I'm, I'm healthy. Sorry. I'm feeling great, but I would like to well, respond to that. I want to. I want to start by saying. But let me take this moment, if I might, uh, to thank so many people uh, from all over this country, including many of my colleagues up here, for their love, for their prayers, for their well wishes. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm so happy to be back here with you this evening. Well, Congressman, Congressman, you just made it clear that you don't know how this is actually going to take weapons off the streets. If you can develop the plan further, I think we can have a debate about it, but we can't wait. People are dying in the streets right now. We can't wait for universal background checks that we finally have a shot to actually get through. We can't wait to ban the sale of new weapons and high capacity magazines so we don't wind up with millions more of these things on the street. We can't wait for red flag laws that are going to disarm domestic abusers and prevent suicides, which are not being talked about nearly enough as a huge part of the gun violence epidemic in this country. We cannot wait for purity tests. We have to just get something done. To use the analogy of health care, it would be as though we said, look, we're, we're for primary care, but let's not talk about mental health care because that's a, a bridge too far. Pe people need that primary care now, so let's save that for another day. No, let's decide what we are going to believe in, what we are going to achieve, and then let's bring this country together in order to do that. The problem is in the polls. The problem is the policy. And I don't need lessons from you on courage, political or personal. I'm going to say something that is probably going to offend some people here, but I'm the only one in the stage that's gotten anything really big done from the Violence Against Women Act to making sure that we pass the Affordable Care Act to be in a position where we, in fact, took a, almost a $90 billion act that, that kept us from going in a depression. But you know what you also got done, and I say this as a good friend, you got the disastrous war in Iraq done. You got a bankruptcy bill which is hurting 
middle class families all over this country. You got trade agreements like NAFTA and PNTR with China done, which of course does 4 million jobs. I served in the Obama administration. I know what we can do by executive authority and I will use it. Okay. I agreed with the great job she did. And I went on the floor and got you votes. I got votes for that bill. I convinced people to vote for it. So let's get those things straight too. I am deeply grateful to President Obama who fought so hard to make sure that agency was passed into law. Understand. You did a hell of a job in your job. Thank you.